Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Wednesday midweek service. I have a verse I would like to share with you. It says in Isaiah 49, verse 13, Shout it out for joy, you heavens. Rejoice, you earth. Burst into song, you mountains. For the Lord comforts his people and will have compassion on his afflicted ones. God will always have a helping hand for you, because if you ask, you shall receive through prayer, of course. And through him, nothing is impossible. Let's bow our heads down in prayer. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this wonderful midweek service. And thank you for waking us up today for this service. Bless Pastor Manny for his message that he will give us more knowledge to know more about you. Forgive us for all our sins and guide the people that are going through hard times right now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen.
Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful worship service. Uh, once again, thank, uh, bless Pastor Manny to, for his preaching to let us know more about you. Guide the people that are going through rough times and have problems with their mental and physical health. Protect us, O Lord, and forgive us for all that we have done. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So praise the Lord. So tonight, um, we are continuing on our study dito sa prophecy book, ano? the book of Ezekiel. And uh, Ezekiel, yung prophet na to, he's giving a series of prophecy. Ano? Talagang from, from the beginning, chapter 4, kasi verse yung 1 to 3, you know? That's his ordination. Chapter 4 all the way to chapter 20. Actually, all the way to the end of the entire chapter and entire book. Ano? It's all about prophecy. It's all about prophecy. And the pro prophecy is particularly to the people of Judah. No? The people of Israel on the southern part who were exiled to Babylon. Ano? Uh, so today or tonight, we will be seeing chapter 21 and hopefully we can go to chapter 22 also. No? Still speaking about judgment dito. Judgment pa rin ang pinag-uusapan dito. Oh. Ang title ng ating message is The Sword of Judgment. No? So The Sword of Judgment. Yung sword na to na sinasabi dito, hindi itong tulad ng sword na sinasabi doon yung testament. No? Normally kasi pag sinabi nating sword, is the sword of the word of God, ano? It's just like it's like a two-edged sword, no? The word of God is like a sword with two-edged sword, ano? Parang ganon. Pero itong sword na to, ibang sword ang sinasabi dito. This is a sword of judgment, chastisement, killing, ano? Talagang there's a lot of uh, 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 killing that that will happen. Ito talaga yung judgment na. Ano, so just to give you an outline ano dun sa pinag-uusapan natin we have seen this before already no itong outline na to uh, just to recap in or, or parang refresh mind lang sa atin ano so itong entire book of uh, Ezekiel it's all about uh, prophecy so that's why it's called pro prophecy book ano so um, dito sa mula after uh, mula the beginning Except yung chapter 1 to 3. Because yung chapter 1 to 3, yun yung ordination ke Ezekiel. Remember, Ezekiel was ordained by the Lord. It is the Lord himself who ordained him. And the Lord presented himself to to him, to uh, to Ezekiel in a very elaborate way. no? So yung chapter 1 and chapter 3, hanggang uh, chapter 3, it talks about that. Mula sa chapter 4 hanggang 32, it is a prophecy of judgment prophecy of judgment that there is a judgment that is upon the people of Judah the people of Israel 
And then at the end of chapter 32, wherein the destruction really take place, it really happened. So for seven years, say itong si Ezekiel to the people of Judah, no, that there will be a destruction. Seven years siyang nagprapisay dito until it happened. Sabi nila hindi naman mangyayari yan. Ang tagal naman. Seven years, di ba? Doon sa Revelation, meron ng seven, seven years of... So, uh, tapos, when, pagkatapos nung destruction na yon, nangyari na, the, the Lord sent Ezekiel again to prophesy to the people of Judah that there will be a restoration. Yes, na-destroy kayo. Yes, na-destroy kayo. Pero, the Lord will tell uh, Ezekiel, prophesy to the people that there will be a restoration na destroy sila yung temple of Jerusalem was totally destroyed they will wash out but I'm the sabi niya ng Lord magiiwan ako ng mga remnants and that remnants they will restore Jerusalem there will be a restoration so Ezekiel was prophesying for 15 more years for the people para mabigyan ng lakas ng loob ang mga people of Judah the people of the Lord kahit na na-destroy kayo Merong hope. There is hope that I will be prophesying. So, there is a restoration. Pero dito sa judgment na to, yung chapter 4 hanggang chapter 24, mula doon, it is the judgment that the Lord is giving to the people of Judah, the people of Israel. Pero, the Lord is using Babylon. The Lord is using Babylon to judge the people of Israel. Ano? And then, pagdating ng chapter 25 hanggang chapter 32, the Lord also will judge yung Babylon. Yes, ginamit sila ng Lord to judge the people of the Lord. But, the Lord will use Himself. Yung, yung dahil they destroy the people of God, i-destroy ko rin kayo. Yun ang mangyayari doon. So, there's a judgment to the people of Israel and there's also a judgment to those people who destroyed Jerusalem. There's a judgment to the people of Babylon. Ayan, yan yung ang ano yan. So, para ma-understand lang natin itong pinag-uusapan natin. So, uh, ang, ang maintindihan natin dito, even though, ito yung gusto kong ma-clarify sa atin, no? Even though that there is judgment, kahit na may judgment to the people of Israel, even the Lord is against the people of the Lord. Ano? Kahit may judgment sa kanila, God is always a compassionate God. Mabait ang Diyos, compassionate ang Diyos, mahabagin ang Diyos doon sa mga people of Judah kahit na merong judgment sa kanila. Compassionate siya sa kanila. Kasi dito sa Ezekiel, ang sabi dito sa Ezekiel, ano? Ezekiel chapter uh, 18, verse 31 hanggang verse 32, ang sabi dito, Cast away from you all the transgressions which you have committed and get yourself a new heart and a new spirit. Sabi niya dito, ang ganda nito, makikita natin dito na ang, ang Diyos compassionate siya. Ang Diyos is loving siya. Ang Diyos uh, mapagmahal siya sa kanyang people kahit na may judgment sa kanila. Alright? So, sabi niya dito, Sabi niya dito, And get yourself a new heart and a new spirit. The Lord is still wanting, the Lord is still asking the people of Israel, kung maare, kung maare, magkaroon kayo ng new heart, magkaroon kayo ng new spirit. Ay, okay na? Okay. So, for, sabi niya dito, oh, makinig kayo, For why should you die, O house of Israel, for I have no pleasure in the death of the one who dies. Gusto ko sana, sabi niya, kasi the Lord is compassionate, the Lord is giving them a lot of grace period. And dami, seven years nag itong si, si Ezekiel bago nangyari yung 
talagang judgment sa kanila for seven years. Dapat nangyari na yon on the spot. But the Lord have prolonged it. Kasi sabi niya, because I have find no pleasure in the death of those people who die. Hindi ako natutuwa na kayo ay madestroy. Hindi ako matutuwa na, na may judgment sa inyo. I have find no pleasure to that. Ang sabi niya. So sabi niya, I want you to have a new heart. I want you to have a new spirit. Sabi nga niya, oh, therefore, turn and live. Yun yung desire ng Lord. Yun ang gusto ng Lord. Kung maari, turn kayo sa akin in order for you to live. Gusto ko mabuhay kayo kasi I find no pleasure in the death of those people who die. Ano? So, yung death ng mga tao na sinful, mahalaga sa Diyos. Pero alam nyo, isa pang mas mahalaga. Even the death of the faithful. Kasi dito, dito sa particular chapter na to, sabi niya, there will be a judgment that will happen to both righteous and the unrighteous. Ngayon, even to the death of the people who are righteous, the Lord also uh, cares about that. Ano, the Lord find value to the death of the people who are righteous in the sight of the Lord. Ano? Kasi sabi dito, sa Psalm chapter 16, verse 15, ano? the death of His faithful ones are valuable to the Lord's sight. So the death of the unrighteous, the Lord find no pleasure in the death of the unrighteous. And even to the death of the righteous one, sabi niya, it is valuable to the Lord. Why? Why it's valuable to the Lord? Because that is the very moment that they will be in the presence of the Lord. Absent on earth is present on God. And that will be the time that the Lord will spread His arms to welcome the righteous, the people of the Lord. So the Lord values even the death of the righteous one. Ano? So, always remember that ang lagi nating tatandaan dito sa verse na to, the particular verse na to, even though there's judgment, that even though there's chastisement, even though there is a, 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 the hands of the Lord is upon the people of Judah, ang Lord is still a gracious God. The Lord is still a loving God. Di ba kung minsan tayo, kapag halimbawang dinidisiplina natin yung ating anak, di ba hindi tayo natutuwa? yung heart natin parang talagang na na na, na, na quench no parang talagang na napipiga na ganun din ang Diyos mas lalong higit ang Diyos the lord find no pleasure to the death of the ones who die ano mahal tayo ng Diyos kahit na dumadating yung mga judgment ano always remember kasi ang daming judgment dito god is still compassionate and the Lord gives a lot of grace period. The Lord is giving the people of Israel time to repent. Kung pwede lang mag-repent na kayo. Kung pwede lang bumalik na kayo. Kung pwede lang itanggalin ko itong, ano, itong, itong judgment na to kung maaari lang. Because I don't want it to happen. But you know, the people of Israel hard-headed. Kung minsan, ganun din tayo, no? Hard-headed, no? After how many the Lord, many times that the Lord is keep on reminding us, telling us, the Lord is so patient. Ang pasensya ng Lord, ano? Talaga namang ganun na lang. If the Lord is so patient, what does tells us? That we should be also a man of, and woman of patience, no? Kailangan yung patience natin mataas din. Kasi we are created in the image of God. Always remember, the Lord delays the judgment. Dito sa, ano, dito sa Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 20, and sabi niya dito, I look for someone. Kung maari lang. Kasi the judgment will be on the people of Judah. Sa, ano, sa, sa Jerusalem. Ano. Pero nagtitingin ng Lord. 
I don't want to destroy that, that city. I don't want to destroy that nation. Kaya sabi ng Lord, I look for someone. I look for someone among them who would bid up the wall and stand up. Sabi niya, and stand up before me in the gap on behalf of the land. So I would so I would not have to destroy it. Naghahanap ako. Sabi niya, kahit isa lang. Naghahanap ako ng someone na righteous so that I would not have to destroy it. But the problem is, I find no one. Bakit I find no one? Di ba nandun si Jeremiah? Eventually, even Jeremiah himself, I don't know if Jeremiah died because there was no record of Jeremiah or probably Jeremiah left that place already because nobody would listen to him anyways. So the Lord had taken him out first. And then the Lord is looking for someone who is righteous. And the Lord said, I find no one. Do you remember yung ano, Sodom and Gomorrah? Diba? The Lord, you see, Abraham, he made a bargain to the Lord. Lord, sabi, sabi na Lord, I'm gonna destroy this Sodom already because of the sin is so rampant into that nation, into that city. Pero si Abraham sabi niya, Lord, uh, if there are 50 righteous in Sodom, would you still destroy it? Sabi ng Lord, no? I'm not gonna destroy it for the sake of the people. Ganun ka compassionate ang Lord because He finds no pleasure in the death of those people who die. Sabi niya, for the sake of the 50, okay, kahit ilang thousand people pa yung population doon, 50 na lang, okay na. Pero Abraham came back, sabi niya, Lord, eh paano kung 40 lang? 40 na lang. Sabi ng Lord, okay, for the sake of the 40 people, I'm not gonna destroy Sodom. Bumalik uli si Abraham. Lord, paano kung 30 na lang? Tawad na 30. Sabi ng Lord, okay, for the sake of 30, I'm not gonna destroy the, the Sodom. Okay na. 30, pwede na rin. Lord, huwag kang magagalit sa akin, ha? Kung 20 na lang, 20. Sabi ng Lord, for the sake of 20, I'm still not gonna destroy Sodom because I find no pleasure in the death of those people who die. Because God is a compassionate God. God is a loving God. God is a gracious God. Balik uli itong si Abraham. Lord, 10 na lang. Huwag kang magagalit. Uling tawad, 10. Out of how many thousands of population? Sige, 10. But same true. The Lord is looking for someone that is righteous so that He would not have to destroy it. But the problem is, si Lot lang nandun. And we know Lot Questionable pa yung righteousness niya. Questionable pa, isa lang. That's why the destruction to Sodom took place. And same true with this. God is compassionate God. God is a loving God kahit na may distra dis distraction, kahit na may judgment, as much as possible, as much as possible, God don't want the judgment to take place. God always give us an opportunity to repent. Ganun ang Diyos sa atin. Alam nyo kung, kung, kung iisipin ko lang kahit sa sarili ko, no? kung talagang hindi lang siguro compassionate ang Lord sa akin, baka ang judgment ng Lord ang tagal na dumating, ang tagal lang dumating. But the Lord is so patient, the Lord is so compassionate, the Lord is so loving that He prolongs, that He prolongs the grace period at kung maari, that you repent and live. Na kung maari, you turn back to me, ang sabi ng Lord. So God is loving, God is patient, that we should also be 
patient. Ano? Kailangan maging patient tayo. So, ano, introduction lang pala yun. Ha? So, <laughs> itong ano, eh, <laughs> eh, de, 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 joke lang. <laughs> Ito ang pinag-uusapan natin, itong sword of judgment. Now, let's talk about the swords of judgment dito sa Ezekiel chapter 21. Ano? Na sinasabi dito. Basahin natin yung text. Sabi niya dito, The word of the Lord came to me. Sabi niya, it is Ezekiel who's talking over here. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man. Son of man is talking about Ezekiel. Ano? Set your face against Jerusalem and preach against the sanctuary, prophesy against the land of Israel. So, the Lord of Israel, the Lord of Israel turns against His people, turns against Israel, ano? si Yahweh, the Lord God, no? who made a covenant with the people of Israel. These are the covenant people, di ba? Pinag-aralan natin yon. nung pinag-aralan natin si Abraham that the covenant people of the Lord is the Israel. But at this point of time, the Lord is against His covenant people. The Lord is against the people of Israel, particularly to Judah, kasi during that time, yung northern part, Israel, di ba? It was divided into two. Yung Israel, the northern part, and the southern part is Judah. Actually, at this point of time, the northern part is already destroyed. It was already destroyed by Assyrian. Wala na, no more existing. Ito na lang ang natitira. And the Lord still wants to keep them. Ito na lang. And then they will be destroyed. But the Lord's hand, kasi why? Why the Lord's judgment is upon these people? Kasi God is a judge. He's not just a judge, but He is a righteous judge. Kung ikaw ang righteous judge, you have to do what you have to do. Ang sabi ng Lord, for the wages of sin is death. And if you are a righteous God, yung nagkasala, kailangang maparusahan. That's what it is, because He is a righteous God. But as much as possible, you repent in order for the judgment will not come to you. No? Ang gusto ng Lord, you repent. Pero hindi sila nag-repent. Ano? Uh, kaya the people of Israel are judged. Sabi niya, prophesy against the land of Israel. So this is the prophecy against the land that the people of Israel. Sabi niya dito, and say to the land of Israel, verse 3, says the Lord, Behold, I am against you, and I will draw my sword out of the sheath. Ano? Sabi niya dito, No, wala. Dile. Nangyari. Okay. All right, so let's continue. Okay. And uh, sabi niya dito, uh, verse 3. Nawala yung ano ko. Thus says the Lord, Behold, I am against you, and I will draw my sword out of its sheath, and cut off my righteousness and wicked from you, because I will cut off both righteousness, righteous and the wicked. Therefore, my sword shall be out of its sheath. Nawawala. Dali, makita. Live tayo, no? Ganun talaga. Pag live. <laughs> Anything, oh yeah, could happen. Ano? Okay, yan, lumalabas na siya again. Okay. Alright, so, Continue. So, dumating yung sword. <laughs> Asa na? Okay, okay, okay. Alright, naman wala. Okay. Ayan. Ayan, okay. Ayan, mas maganda ngayon. Okay. Alright, so maraming salamat sa ating tech guide. Talagang they are 
so helpful ano okay so uh sabi dito okay basahin natin ulit and says the lord of israel that says the lord behold i am against you so the lord is against the people of israel ano so dumating yung time sabi niya dito i will draw my sword i will draw my sword from his sheath ano All right. So, sandali, sandali, sandali. Okay, keep going, keep going tayo. Okay, makita. Okay, all right. Asan na? Namamatay yung computer ko. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, okay, keep going tayo. So so yung judgment of the Lord is taking place to the people of Israel, no? And uh sabi niya dito, yung judgment of the Lord will come, sabi niya dito, I will cut off both righteous and the wicked. Both righteous and the wicked. Di ba pinag-usapan natin the last time na yung righteous, yung kasalanan ng ama hindi kasalanan ng anak. Hindi ba? Kung sino yung nagkasala, siya yung mapaparusahan. But the thing over here, sabi niya, is, I am against you and I will draw my sword. Sabi na, and I will cut off both righteous and the wicked. Bakit? Bakit pati sila kasama? Ano? Tandaan natin, meron tayong tinatawag na uh, uh, tinatawag na individual level at saka national level. Yung individual level, kung sino lang yung nagkasala, of course, siya yung mapaparsahan. Kung hindi ka nagkasala, even though your parents, your parents are, uh, uh, are sin against the Lord, hindi ka kasali doon. Kasi individual. Pero meron tayong tinatawag na national level. Ano? Because yung, yung Babylon will be against Jerusalem. Tandaan natin, the Babylon will be against Jerusalem. Di ba? So, pag halimbawa, yung pana ng, Jerusa, ng, ng Babylon, ikakas niya, tatamaan doon sa loob ng, ng, ng city, kahit righteous ka pa o non-righteous ka pa. Di ba? Remember, the way they are doing it, the way they are uh, conquering one nation is by besieging. Diba, papalibutan nila yung nation at yung lahat ng nandun sa loob, magkakaroon ng famine dun sa loob ng nation. At kapag nagkaroon ng famine doon sa loob, so kahit na pa-righteous ka, kahit na pa uh, uh, unrighteous ka, pareho kayong gugutumin. Pareho kayong hindi makakakain kapag walang pagkain. So kaya, sabi niya, both righteous and the unrighteous, kahit na yung righteous ka pa or righteous ka pa, apektado ka. Tulad halimbawa na itong uh, COVID, no? COVID-19. Kahit na ba sabihin mo pang righteous ka, kahit na sabihin mo pang Christian ka, kapag na-infect ka, napunta sa iyo yung virus, kahit na pa Christian ka, magkakasakit ka. Kahit na ba ikaw si Greg Laurie, o kahit na ba ikaw si Donald Trump, Greg Glory na righteous. Donald Trump na nyo <laughs> magkaka-COVID ka. Kung, kung, that's why it's trying to say here, even though you are righteous and unrighteous, it happened, it will affect you. The judgment, the judgment of the Lord is upon the people. Whether for the wicked and for the unrighteous. Halimbawa, let's say, kung halimbawa, let's say, mag-asawa kayo, no? Halimbawa, mag-asawa. And then, yung asawang lalaki, he did something outside of the marriage, tapos nagkasakit siya for what he did, tapos slept with the wife, na righteous yung wife, na transfer yung sakit. So, same true with that. Kahit na pa-righteous ka, it could happen. 
So same true with this like COVID-19 that we are facing right now. No? So, sabi niya dito, both righteous and the unrighteous. Ano? Uh, tatamaan ka, tatamaan ng pana ng Babylon kahit na righteous sila o unrighteous sila. No? Uh, so, yun yung sinasabi dito. So, next, uh, next verse tayo, sabi niya dito, uh, So, ang, ang, ang sabi niya dito, against all flesh from south to north that all flesh may know that I am the Lord. In order for them to know that He is the Lord. So, anong sinasabi dito? The Lord is saying here na yung, yung the people of Israel, they sin against the Lord. And because the, the people of Israel sins against the Lord, may consequences yung kasalanan. There's consequences in the sin that we have done, that we have committed. Ano? So, uh, continue natin. Read tayo. Sabi niya dito, verse 6, Pero alam niyo, ang Lord is compassionate God. Ano? The Lord is loving God kahit na yung, yung judgment nandyan na, kahit na uh, the Lord is disciplining His people. Sabi niya dito, Therefore, sigh. Therefore, Parang yung sigh, sabi niya, yung bang uh, with breaking heart, yung talagang yung heart broken ka with all bitterness, ano? Sabi niya dito, kasi ito yung judgment, ito yung pronouncement of judgment. So ito na yung judgment, darating na, it's gonna take place. Tandaan natin hanggang chapter 24 lang yung judgment and then chapter 24, done na. Chapter 21 na to. So, it's getting close, sabi ng Lord, no? Sabi niya, son, uh, Sigh therefore, son of man, with a breaking heart, and sigh with bitterness before their eyes. It shall be when they, uh, when they say to you, Why are you sighing? That you shall answer because of the news. When it comes, every heart will melt, all hands will be feeble, every spirit will faint, and all the knees will weak as water. Behold, it is coming, and that shall be brought to pass, says the Lord God. So ito na, parating na, it is coming. Yung prophecy, alam nyo si Ezekiel, he is always telling a, a, a prophecy. Puro prophecy of judgment. How would you like that? Ano? Nakapag tinawag ka ng Lord, ito ang calling mo. Eto, nakasulat sa scroll. Remember, the Lord has given the scroll ng pagbasa niyang ganon. Puro, ano, lamentation. Kasi ito yung bibigay mo sa kanila. There will be a lot of crying, gnashing of teeth, you know. There will be a lot of mourning. There will be a lot of crying. There will be a lot of distraction. Sabi niya, kainin mo yon, Because that is the very thing that will be coming out from your mouth, ang sabi ni, ng Lord sa kanya. No? So, this is a pronouncement of the judgment to the people of Israel. Ito yung judgment sa kanya. Sabi niya dito, uh, Again, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, prophesy and say, Thus says the Lord, this is a, a sword, a sword is sharpened and is also polished. Itong sword na to na sinasabi dito, this is the sword of judgment. Itong swords na to, sabi niya, na, na ano na, na sharpen na siya. Na polish na siya, ibig sabihin, ready ready na siya. Ready ready na siyang mag magtabakin. Ready ready na yung yung judgment dumating. Alam niyo sa atin din ano? If we are not repenting before the Lord. But the Lord is really is, Keep on asking and telling us to repent. And if we have the hardened heart, not repenting before the Lord, para sinasabi ng Lord, I am a compassionate God. I am a loving God. I am a gracious God. But I'm telling you, for the wages of sin is death. And the sword is already sharpened. The sword is already polished. And it is ready. Nakaready na siya. Sabi niya dito, sharpen to make a dreadful slaughter. Sharpen. 
It's so hindi ito yung yung sword of uh, the spirit, hindi ito yung sword of uh, of word of God, ito yung sword of judgment. That ready to kill, that ready to slaughter, polished to flash like lightning. Should when we make the meat, it despise the scepter of my son. Ano yung ibig sabihin ng it despise the scepter of my son? Ano ba yung scepter? Yung scepter is yung tungkod ng hari. It is the stick of the king. Sabi niya dito, ibig sabihin, even the king hindi makakalampas dito sa sword of judgment na to. Sabi niya, it despise the scepter of my son. The scepter of the one that I put up. The scepter of the king. Ano? As it does all wood. And he has given it to the uh, to be polished that it may be handled. The word is uh, the sword is sharpened and it is polished and to be given into the hand of the slayer. Sino yung hand na yon? Sino yung slayer na yon? That would be the Babylon. The sword of the Lord, the sword of judgment will be given to the slayer, will be given to Babylon and the Babylon will use it so, ibig sabihin nun, even though it is Babylon who conquered Jerusalem, even the, though uh, King Nebuchadnezzar is the one who slay the people of Judah, but it is the Lord who is behind it. Si Lord talaga ang nag-orchestrate nun na para mangyari yun. It is the Lord who have given that sword to Nebuchadnezzar, to, to the Babylon. So it shows here that God is a sovereign God. God is the powerful God. God is in control of everything. Even to the mind of the king of Babylon, even though yung mga people na nagdestroy to the people of Israel, it is the Lord who is behind it. Ganun ka powerful ang Lord, ano? Sabi niya dito, Cry and wail, son of man, for it will be against my people, against all the princes of Israel. Terrors includes the, war- the sword, will be against my people. Therefore, strike your tie, because it is, uh, it, it is a testing. And with it, sabi niya, and, and what if the sword despises even the scepter? The scepter shall be no more. Anong ibig sabihin nun? The scepter shall be no more. Wala nang king. ba? Remember natin, during that time, sabi ng Lord, I am your king. Ako na yung king nyo. But the, Lord, the people of Israel, sabi na, gusto namin meron kami nakikitang king. Yung kasi ibang mga nation, meron silang mga king, kami wala. But the Lord would say, I am already your king. I am already your Lord. And I am already your protector. Sabi niya. Pero anong, gusto ko meron kaming king na nakikita, tao. And then they were given this king's soul. Pero, the Lord is staying over here. Yung hiningi nyo na yon, wala na. Even though that king that you will ask are asking for, I'm telling you that I am the King of Kings and I'm the Lord of Lords. I'm most powerful than those kings that you are asking for. And then I'm telling you, the king will be no more. The scepter will be no more. So the last king of the people of Judah, Hezekiah, is gone. But there will be a king who will rise up after King Hezekiah. And we know he is the soon and coming king. That's why we do believe that there is this Jesus Christ who resurrected and he is coming back to be the king of kings and the Lord of lords because that is the promise that there will be a king after Hezekiah. After there will be a king who will reign forever and ever. That's why some of the prophecy in the book of Ezekiel hasn't happened yet because our Lord Jesus Christ haven't returned yet. And there will be a new Jerusalem 
wherein the king of that Jerusalem is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen? Alright. So, ang sabi niya dito, The word of the Lord came to me again saying, The son and son of man, appoint for yourself two ways for the sword of the king of Babylon to go. Ito kasi yung during that time, ano? itong king of Babylon, meron siyang dalawang uh, kailangang pupuntahan. It's either the Amorite or Judah or Jerusalem. Pipili siya. So nasa fork, fork road siya, alin ang pipiliin niya? Itong Amorite or wherein both of them will be destroyed. Pero the Lord made Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, go to against Judah. Ito yon. The word of the Lord came to me saying again, The Son of Man, appoint for yourself two ways. Two ways. Fork road. Two ways. Sabi niya dito, For the sword of the king of Babylon, For the sword of the king of Babylon, both of them shall go from the same land, make a sign, put it on the head of the road to the city, appoint a road for the sword to go to Raba of the Amorites and to Judah into fortified Jerusalem. So itong sword, pipili siya, nasa pork road. So titignin niya kung saan siya pupunta. Sabi niya dito, For the king of Babylon start, uh, stand at the parting of the road. So nasa pork road siya, the parting of the road, pipili siya kung alin yung pupuntahan niya. But of course, the Lord, sword, Judgment. Diba? Binigay yung sword dun sa king. Binigay ang sword dun sa slayer. Nandun na ngayon kay Nebuchadnezzar. Ngayon, pipili siya kung saan pupunta yung sword na yon. Sa Amorites o sa Judah. Sabi niya, nasa fork road siya. At the fork road, at the fork road, to use a divination, he shakes the arrows. Kasi yun, during that time, ganun sila magiging ng consultation eh. Alam niyo yung mga arrows, they shake the arrows. Meron silang different ways. Tapos yung iba, bubuksan nila yung, yung animals. Tapos kukunin nila yung mga bituka, kukunin nila yung liver. Tapos yung liver, parang nakasulat doon kung saan, kung ano yung mang, sagot doon sa question nila. Meron silang ganong ways. Ano? He shakes the arrows, he consoled the images, he took at the liver. Yung liver talaga ng, ng animal kukunin, susunugin or something like that. Tapos may usok sigun lalabas, tapos lalabas yung letter S. Okay. Or letter J, ibig sabihin Judah tayo. <laughs> Parang ganun, ewan ko kung basta mga ganun. So they consult the liver. Ano? And if you would remember, ano, even si, ano, si, si Samson, he touched the, ano, the liver. Bawal yun sa kanila, eh, sa Amorites. But anyways, next time na yun. Ano? So, uh, sabi niya dito, uh, verse 22, In his right hand uh, is divination for Jerusalem. He set up battering rams. He calls for a slaughter to lift the voice with shouting to set a battering rams against the gates to heap up a siege mouth and to build a wall. Tapos na, now to you, O profane wicked prince of Israel, sabi niya, whose days has come, whose iniquity shall end, thus says the Lord, remove the turban and take off the crown. Ano ibig sabihin? During that time kasi yung mga hari, mga king, meron silang turban. Yung, 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 yung crown nila parang, ano, parang tela na maganda yung magandang tela. Ayan, parang crown na nila yon. Ayun, tapos meron din pa, meron din silang classing crown na metal. Sabi niya ganun, remove your turban, remove your crown. Ibig sabihin, you will no longer be the king because you will be destroyed because there will be no more king. And we know what happened to Zedekiah. No? He was taken capture to Babylon. Ano? Pati yung kanyang mga anak, pinatay ang kanyang mga anak sa harapan niya, binulag siya, tapos matagal pa bago siya pinatay. Imagine for, for the moment, for how many so days or, or months, hindi ko alam kung gano'ng katagal, bulag ka. Kasi during that time, pagka, pag king ka, hindi ka nila papatayin ka agad. 
gusto nila yung pagkakapatay sa iyo yung unti-unti. Ganun ka papatayin. Kung maari yung kurot-kurot ang gagawin nila sa iyo na pagkakamatay. Mamamatay ka sa kurot. Ganun. <laughs> Ganun ang kamamata. Ano kinamatay mo, kurot? Yan, parang ganun ang gusto nila. Yung talagang feel na feel mo yung pinong-pinong kurot. Yung ganun. Kaya bin, pinatay muna yung mga anak niya and then binulag siya. Torture talaga. Torture ang nangyari dito sa king na to. Imagine nung hinihila siya. Tatali ka, hubod-tubod ka. Tapos, alam mo yung, yung pinang-ano uh, talaga nila? Alam mo yung pang, panghuli ng isda? Yung ganon, itutusok nila dito sa ilong mo. Ganon. Tapos itatali nilang ganon habang hinihila ka nila. Ganon katindi. Yan, tapos tutusokin ka dito, tutusokin ka doon habang hinihila ka. Ganon. Torture ang gagawin nila doon sa mga hari. Kaya as much as possible, ayaw nilang mamatay. Di ba? Remember, yung, yung, yung hari nga, pag alimbawang na, na tinamaan siya ng spirit, buhay pa siya, ang gagawin niya, papatayin na niya yung sarili niya. Because when they die in the battle, they feel like they are more, it's more heroic for them. And it is disgraceful if you live, if you, dis, you know, if you survive in the battle. You rather die than survive because it will be very disgraceful for you. Ano? So, so, nothing shall remain the same. Some exalt the humble and humble the exalt. Overthrown, overthrown, I'll make it overthrown. It shall be, uh, it shall be no longer until he come whose right it is and I will give it to him. So, ibig sabihin, it, the nation, yung covenant people of the Lord, it was given to the enemy for destruction. The nation of Judah, the people of the Lord, na covenant niya, they were destroyed. So with all these things that we are talking about, ano, ano yung lesson? Ano yung lesson na makukuha natin dito? Remember that the Lord is a loving God. The Lord is a gracious God. The Lord is giving us a lot of uh, grace period. Ano? Mahal tayo ng Lord, ano? Ang lesson natin dito is that God is a sovereign God. God is a powerful God. Ano? So He is the Lord who is above everything. Even to the mind of the King, He is above all. And yung power ng Lord is He deserves to be worshipped. He deserves to be adored. He is the creator of everything. He is a sovereign God. Ang lesson dito is God's wrath is righteous. Walang halong unrighteousness yung galit ng Diyos. Yung judgment of the Lord, it is completely it because of who He is. Because He is a righteous judge. God is holy and just. Holy siya, pero just siya. Ibig sabihin, may justice sa Kanya. Yung nagkasala, mapaparusahan. But He is a gracious God also that He is saying, kung maari, mag-repent na lang kayo, magsisi kayo, para wala ng judgment. So, lesson number three natin is the, uh, this God's desire for us is to repent. God's desire for us is to repent. Kasi sabi nito sa Sakaraya, no? sa book of Zechariah chapter 1, verse 3, this is what the Lord God Almighty says. Sabi niya dito, Return to me, return to me, declares the Lord Almighty, and I will return to you. Return to me, and I will return to you. God's desire for us is to return to Him, to repent back to Him. Kahit na may judgment to the people of Israel, God is loving God. Binigyan niya sila ng maraming grace period, ganun din sa atin. So, we should be also patient as the Lord is patient. Amen. Let's close our eyes. Let's pray.
we want to thank you, Lord, for this uh, another evening of uh, study, oh Lord, another evening of meditation of your word. We want to thank you, O oh God, for the understanding that you have given us tonight, O oh Lord. We thank you, O oh God, for uh, the opportunity, O oh Lord, to uh, learn from you, O oh God, to be in your presence. And Lord, the message that uh, you have for us is so clear, Lord, that you are a righteous God. You are a loving God. Despite there are a lot of judgment to the people, your covenant people, O oh Lord, you have, them, you have given them a lot of grace. You have given them a lot of opportunity, O oh Lord, to repent back and to turn back to you, O oh Lord. But sometimes, oh God, the heart of the people are so stubborn. Lord, at this moment, oh God, we pray that you give us a heart that is willing to repent. Give us the heart, oh God, that is willing to uh, go back to you, oh Lord, and accept our mistake, accept our shortcoming, oh Lord, and make us return back to you. We thank you, oh Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, have a blessed evening, everyone.